My name is Lilia Acosta and I work for the Center of Competence of Micropollutants in Baden-Württemberg. Uh, and I will talk to you about the current situation in our federal state in Germany. Uh, I'm focusing in this state, yes, in Baden-Württemberg, because each state of Germany works in a different way. So I will talk to you about this. First of all, well, I don't know if you know where Baden-Württemberg is. If you don't know, I will show you. Here is Baden-Württemberg. Uh, it's in the south of Germany. Uh, the capital is Stuttgart, and we have an area of about 36 uh, square kilometers with uh, 11 million of habitants and a, a density of population of 310 people per square kilometer. Uh, we have 906 wastewater treatment plants in Baden-Württemberg, and almost 60% of them will then discharge the effluent into a water body that contains at least 10% uh, of wastewater. So that's why it's important for us to remove these micropollutants. Um, we have, like, we use around 700 million of cubic meter of drinking water uh, per year in Baden-Württemberg from which about 75% comes from, the, from groundwater and spring water, and about 25% of it comes from surface water. Uh, we also take some drinking water supply from the lake in Contents, const, uh, Lake Contents that is in the South Germany, uh, with Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, uh, and it, we take per year about 100 170 cubic meter per, per year. And we also take from the river Danube, that is near Ulm, uh, about 40 million of cubic meter uh, per year. And we have uh, about 77% of the wastewater treatment plants that effluent that land end up in the, either in the Lake Constance, Lake Constance or in the uh, Upper Danube, that it's in the uh, Spavian Alps. So what is our strategy to remove the micropollutants? Uh, we have the Ministry of Environment in Baden-Württemberg that want to uh, prevent this problem by doing some uh, dialogues with the stakeholders that we, we have meetings a couple of times per year with doctors, with pharmace pharmaceuticals, uh, with person like environmental consultants, uh, with industries, and we also uh, take some peop normal people in order to know uh, how to prevent this problem, for example, to show them how to uh, dispose correct the uh, old medicines. Uh, we use flyers and we have some measurements in important spots. Uh, so we don't only attack the problem in the wastewater treatment plants, but also from the beginning, because that's important, not just when it already happened, but before it happens. Uh, and we also, uh, well, the government of Adam Buttenberg focuses also on in the upgrade of many of the wastewater treatment plants in the region. Uh, so uh, they, the micropollutants doesn't end in the lake contents. Uh, about comes about the competence center of, of micropollutants in baden württemberg uh, It was created in 2012. Right now we are seven research engineers and our activities are uh, like planning this uh, extra process in the wastewater treatment plants to remove the micropollutants. We do large scale, medium scale and industrial scale, scale experiment um, in order to decide which is the best process for, uh, for each wastewater treatment plant and we have a one handbook that it's uh, the recommended action that it works for the operators of the wastewater treatment plant 
as a guideline. And it was done in 2018. You can find it in our website, but right now it's just in German. Uh, we have uh, three different processes that we are using right now. Uh, ozonation, uh, granulated activated carbon, and uh, adsorption with granulated activated carbon and adsorption with powder activated carbon. Uh, well, um, Christina already explained them, so uh, it's similar for us, so I will just skip it. Uh, but we have 15 uh, full-scale plants in operation, from which two of them are, granulated, are done with granulated activated carbon, and 13 of them are with powder activated carbon. So as you can see, in Baden-Württemberg, we have mostly experience with powder activated carbon. Here we can see our wastewater treatment plants that are uh, already working with, this, uh, with these processes. Uh, this is the stand from October 2015. Uh, and you can see like we have small uh, wastewater treatment plants, for example, this fresh worm with just 24,000 population equivalent. And we have, a, for example, from Mannheim, that is one of the biggest in Baden-Württemberg, with 725,000 population equivalent. And we are planning 17 more, uh, from which four of them will be uh, with ozonation, uh, five of them will be with granulated activated carbon and eight of them will be with powder activated carbon. So, but they are either under construction or in planning. Uh, we have some working paper as a strategy for micropollutants in Baden-Württemberg and uh, these are working to uh, tell us the important criteria like specific criteria that the wastewater treatment plants have to uh, take in care to decide if they will upgrade the, the wastewater treatment plant or not. And these work together with our uh, guideline for investigation. So I will talk to you about uh, what are we taking care of. Uh, one of the criteria as is if we are discharging into lake, content, lake contents or in the upper Danube in, uh, in the front of infiltration points. So this is one of the most important criteria to know if we will upgrade the wastewater treatment plants or not, because uh, these are the main sources for our drinking water. So the next one is if we the church uh, the effluent into groundwater. Um, or if the capacity of the wastewater treatment plant is more than 500,000 uh, population equivalent. So it is really, really important because this wastewater treatment plant that uh, have this criteria will be prioritized to the upgrade and the financiation of the government to do this, uh, this upgrade. Uh, and the wastewater treatment plants that has less, that work for less than 10,000 population equivalent will be excluded right now. Maybe in the future we will upgrade them also, but right now no, because of efficiency. And if we take into account all these criteria, we have around 125 wastewater treatment plant uh, in Baden-Württemberg that should be upgraded uh, in a future. So this is our guideline that we have. The problem is that it's just in German, so if you want to know it, you will have to translate it by yourself. Maybe in the future we will provide it in English, but it's still not clear when. Um, some other things that are required during the upgrade for the wastewater treatment plants in Baden-Württemberg is that they have a, a normal and continuous operation in these wastewater treatment plants with the 
uh, advanced treatment. Uh, and also, uh, in our guidelines, it indicates that uh, we, we have to do uh, measurement campaigns uh, during the year to know if the advanced treatment is working or not. <coughs> so, uh, to know if it is working, we have to have at least six measurements of the, of the last campaign uh, that we have uh, 80 percent of uh, at least 80 percent of efficient of micropollutants removal, and uh, the micropollutants that we are taking care of, uh, like that are more important for us in Baden-Württemberg, are carbamazepine, diclofenac, hydrochlorothiazide, irbesatan, metoprolol, benzotriazole, and 4,5 methyl benzotriazole. So uh, we have another list, like one with 12 and one with 18 micropollutants, uh, that it, in our guidelines, that it also indicates it's an indicator for uh, the wastewater treatment plant operators. But uh, these are the main, like the most important ones. And we have to take uh, to see the efficiency between the final effluent uh, of the wastewater treatment plant after the adsorption state and uh, the wastewater treatment plant influ inf influence. And here we have some results uh, from different wastewater treatment plants in Baden-Württemberg uh, for the case of uh, carbamazepine. Uh, here we see, like, depending of the dosing of the powder activated carbon, uh, we usually have a 10 milligram per liter uh, of powder activated carbon, but depending of the process, for example, some wastewater treatment plants that have this, uh, uh, this adsorption process where we give powder activated carbon in the biology stage, uh, we need a bit more. We need like um, around 20 milligram per liter uh, activated carbon when we use this process. So that's why we, we see here different um, proportions of powder activated carbon dose. And well, we can see usually, as I say, we use this 10 and we have uh, more than 80% of removal of micropollutants. Uh, and this is just the example of carbamazepine. Uh, we take like the efficiency, it's like the concentration in the influent uh, minus the effluent uh, between, divided into, between the influent. And uh, well, these are from the wastewater treatment plant in Crestfront that we have 24 million uh, of, uh, of people. Uh, and this one is the wastewater treatment plant in Mannheim that we have seven, 725 uh, million of people that uh, are using this wastewater treatment plant. And our, you, we usually take the, our samples with 24 hours or 48 hours. Uh, we also have an analysis of long-term long costs uh, with the powder activated carbon treatment because uh, it's the one that we have more experience. As you see, we have 15 uh, wastewater treatment plants that are working this study was made like from 2014 until 2018, and it was published just in uh, in October. So it's really new the results of this study. Uh, this is our uh, general uh, ad uh, adsorption stage uh, with the dos the dos dosage of powder activated carbon into the contact reactor. Then we have some precipitant and some flocculant, and we have the sedimentation tank. And from the sedimentation tank, we will take some activated, some activated carbon sludge 
and we will recirculate it into the contact reactor. So uh, this study is made mostly for this kind of process. So in this uh, picture you can see what it was a, a new invest investion for the investment for the wastewater treatment plant, for example, uh, in Mannheim, uh, the tanks were, were already there, so we didn't have to build them from the beginning. We just reuse it, so they are not taking into account for this uh, cost review. So it's like the powder activated carbon and uh, the precipitant, the flocculent, and uh, this recirculation to the contact reactor. So for the wastewater treatment plant in Sindelfingen, in Kresbron, and in Stocker Ach, uh, we have to build from the beginning the whole adsorption stage. So the tanks, the dosage of the powder activated carbon, uh, precipitant, flocculent, and the recirculation. And in some other uh, wastewater treatment plant, like Lar and Neu Ulm, uh, they didn't have a filter, so they didn't have so big installations like the other wastewater treatment plants. So we have to add, like, from the pumping station, like, to take the water into the adsorption stage, so the whole adsorption stage, and the filter. So they didn't uh, have a filter that that we could use for this adsorption stage. So uh, that means it costs more money uh, to build this whole process. So here we see the specific co costs for each one. Uh, and well, for Mannheim, we, we don't have all the values like for all, from all the years, but we have the last two. And, uh, for the other we have, uh, and also from LAR, we just have the tr last three years. But anyway, we can do a comparison of the costs. Um, we can see uh, that um, these are the, like the bigger wastewater treatment plants, these three, and these are the smaller wastewater treatment plants. Uh, for the bigger wastewater treatment plants, the costs are around uh, 4 cents or 3,5 cents per cubic meter. But in the case uh, of the smaller wastewater treatment plants, they will be more expensive. And they can reach up to 7 cents uh, per cubic meter. So why is this? Mostly what is more affected is the specific analysis cost because small wastewater treatment plants doesn't have a, their own laboratory, so they have to do external an analysis. So uh, the, the micropollutants analysis are known because they are expensive. Uh, the maintenance costs are also uh, higher because they have also to ask for external persons to come and do this maintenance, and also the staff costs. These are, if we compare, for example, here the Neu Ulm plant with the LAR plant, uh, also uh, we can see here the staff costs. How big are these from these wastewater treatment plants? Like in Cresbron, they are really big in comparison with the ones in Neu Ulm and in Mannheim. So that is the reason that the costs uh, are bigger for small wastewater treatment plants. And uh, also it depends on the volume of the water that a uh, wastewater treatment plant is treating. So. I don't know if you have any questions. I think it was fast. Mm -hmm.